Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my unboxing of my book of the month selections for April of this year. Um, as always, I will have a link to the books below if you just want to purchase or to Book of the Month Club. I believe if you sign up using the link below, you get your first month book selection for $5. So it is a good deal. Um, other than that, as always, hit that subscribe button and join me um, if you haven't already. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, if you're not familiar with Book of the Month Club, you can just check out the link below to read a little bit about it. Um, but they have five monthly selections um, released each month, as well as usually around four add-ons. Um, for each account you have, you are allowed up to three books. You will see I have six books, <laughs> so therefore I have two accounts. Um, so let's get started and see the books I picked. Okay, so with every box, you're going to get a bookmark. Mark is unread and then book of the month on the back. So just know that you will have a bookmark to use as you read if you're a bookmark person. So one of the first monthly selections I picked was The Hunting Wives by May Cobb. This is a thriller book. I loved the fact that it had a blend of lipstick and a bullet on the cover. Um, so basically our main character had a career, very stressful but competitive life in big city Chicago and she leaves this all behind um, to settle down with her husband and young son in this small Texas town and it's going to seem very um, ideal, the community, and it's a very rural area, but she's going to soon recognize the town's a little too quiet. It's more bored and restless, and she's going to meet this socialite who's part of this elite clique of women called the Hunting Wives, and she will be completely swept up into their lifestyle. They have these late night target parties and dangerous partying, and um, she's gonna essentially, they'll go from just enjoying them to becoming rather obsessed with um, this group of women, this lifestyle. Then a, we're gonna have a body of a teenage girl get discovered in the woods right where these hunting wives meet and party. And our main character will now be in the midst of a murder investigation. I really have zero expectations for what to expect with this book, um, so I'm very curious to see, yeah, how it goes. So the next of the five monthly selections I picked was What Comes After by Joanne Tompkins, and this was a contemporary fiction selection. We're going to be in a coastal Washington state town for this one, um, so we're going to have a boy by the name of... Isaac or a man by the name of Isaac who lives alone with his dog um, and is grieving the loss of his teenage son. Um, next door to him is a working single mother who's gonna struggle with a heinous act that was committed by her own teenage son. Um, and these two parents are both um, due to their own circumstances emotionally stranded and isolated by the, the loss they have experienced. Um, and then an unfamiliar pregnant 16 year old girl is going to show up and somehow bridge the gap between them um, and change everything that's going on. This is going to be a mystery at its core, but it's going to also be a story of loss and anger, kindness and hope and courage and forgiveness. So it was very intrigued um, by this one as well. And then... I went with the mystery, and this is more of a cozy mystery, which if you've seen one of my recent reviews, you know, is not always a given good genre for me, but Arsenic and Adobo, I was really intrigued by this, by Mia Mamansala, and I'm like, I, I'm going to give this one a go. So our main character, Lila, or Leela, depending on how it's pronounced, moves back home to recover from a horrible breakup. Um, her life seems to be following all the typical tropes of romantic comedies, um, and she's saving her aunt's failing restaurant. And um, she basically has a group of aunts who are love to matchmake and shower her with love and judgment. Um, and then they're going to have a notoriously nasty food critic who is going to drop dead moments after him and Leela or Lila have had a confrontation. And then it's going to basically move into mystery time. <laughs> so the cops are going to be treating her like she's the one and only suspect. 
Um, we're going to have a shady landlord looking to finally kick, kick her family out and resell the storefront. And so she's going to step up and basically start to in, do, lead her own investigation to save herself and her family's um, restaurant. So I'm hoping this one is a fun light read. We will see. Um, then <laughs> this one may surprise you guys. I'm trying, I'm still trying the romance and people we meet on vacation. I'm like, okay, I see potential. I see potential. So we're going to have two friends, Poppy and Alex, very different. Um, she is a wild child. He wears khakis. She's wanderlust. He just wants to be home with a book, which I understand that. Um, and somehow ever since they had this car share home from college many years ago, despite these differences, they've been the best friends. And for most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City, he's in a small hometown, but every summer for a decade, a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. And then up until two years ago, they ruined everything and they haven't spoken since. And we don't know exactly what happened. We have our suspicions. Um, but essentially, Poppy, she's just now stuck in a rut. And someone asks, well, when were you last truly happy? And she thinks about that last trip with Alex. And she decides to convince him to basically let's take another one. Um, together and she's going to try to fix whatever unfolded between them. Um, so yeah, this is another one like my cozy mystery. Not my go-to genres, but I'm hoping just for some fun entertainment. Um, there was, as part of the five literary um, selections for the month, a historical fiction libertai um, that looked good. I wasn't 100% feeling it, so I decided to hold. But if you end up getting it and reading it, let me know what you thought below. From the add-ons, there's actually one add-on um, that was intriguing that wasn't up when I was making my selections. I think they were still loading books. So I missed that one and that was Good Company. So that's another one I'm kind of putting on my radar. If you guys get it, let me know what you thought. But the next one I picked was a mystery that sounded so good, When the Stars Go Dark. So this one is essentially our main character is a missing, seizing, very experienced missing persons detective in San Francisco. And um, she's going to basically be struck with some tragedy in her personal life and therefore head to a North California village to grieve. Um, and while living there, um, she had previously lived when she was a child there with her foster parents. Um, and she's going to basically, so that's why she goes back there um, to grieve. And then she's going to learn that this local child has gone missing. And it's going to feel reminiscent of a crucial time in her own childhood when there was another unsolved murder of a young girl um, that changed the community. So past and present are really going to come together. When I read when I read this book, there was something in the description that I thought was so intriguing just about the way this book is going to have like several different components or feels to it. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to picking up this one and then sharing it with you. And then the last book for my add-ons was is a collection of short stories, Love in Color, Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold. And this is basically going to draw on um, several different uh, internationally um, love, told, commonly told love stories to be retold in this collection. Um, and they're going to pull from historical love stories, mythological love stories, but the author's going to weave in these new details and vivacity. We're going to have influences, folk tales from West Africa. Um, we're going to have, see, you know, the influence of Greek myths, action, um, ancient, I can't talk anymore, ancient legends from the Middle East, and then stories from longer race places. So I love the fact that we are going to experience some of these um, his, just stories that are so woven in various cultures and then have them in a sense, I'm going to assume somewhat modernized and then retold, all focusing around love. So I was so intrigued um, by this collection of short stories. So that was it for my April selections. Those of you that are also subscribers, let me know below what you got um, and then cannot wait to dig into these and uh, read these stories. So thank you as always for watching. Happy reading.